Hey, Mike B here from Mike's Wild World. It's a chilly, rainy day in South Carolina. It'd be a good day to come out to the shop and get a few things caught up that I've been looking at trying to do. Let me show you a few improvements I made while I'm here. I'm just going to bring you over here to, I mean, you know about the fireplace and all this kind of stuff, you know. We've got a little fire burning this morning, kind of warm it up in here some. But this is uh, something I've been working on for a while was a, uh, let's see if I can show you. This is a rainwater uh, sink system. It just has a uh, kind of a dry well outside. And the, uh, the, the rain catchment system is just a five gallon bucket hanging underneath a four foot piece of gutter. Um, and, it, and it catches the water and I piped it in, you know, to the bottom. Today I want to ask you about the weight that you carry in your pack and how much is too much and what do you do to reduce that amount. One of the things that always causes a lot of problem is cookware. How much do you have? Uh, does it do double duty? Today these are titanium sets are so lightweight people just keep putting stuff in them. Stoves, canisters, you know, one canister it is partially used, they have to take a second canister. Does your cookware go in the fire? Are you using gas, split stove, alcohol? You know, what is it you're using? Maybe you're using one of the uh, gasification stoves like I like to use. Um, those are all good choices, you know, as long as your cookware is appropriate for what you're doing. And a lot of people only heat water and they, you know, pour it in the packs and that's all they do. Make a cup of coffee or something. I really like to cook at the end of the day. I like to have a really hot meal of my choosing. Like even if you catch a fish and, and do a fried fish in a pan. So that's what I'm working with is the frying pan. My pot, my pan, I'm sorry, is a, you might be able to see it, it's a, it says C10 for a 10 inch. It has a steel insert inside and then encapsulated in aluminum. Uh, it's really been a good pot. I have this particular cook pot. It's stainless steel. It's been in fires. It's been in gas stoves, alcohol stoves. It's a really nice pot. Recently I bought one of these little shiny pots for my hot water for my coffee. It's stainless steel and not yet. It is not to grace <laughs> the fireplace yet. One of these days it will. And just recently you saw me bake a biscuit in this little feather. We'll weigh all these, see what we got. But what I always have with me is this Optimus stainless steel plate that I can eat out of. So the pan. This is my, my pan that I eat out of. Uh, it looks like uh, 4.6 ounces. I'll take that. This is the frying pan that I use. One pound, four ounces, or yeah, four tenths, I'm sorry. One pound, let's call it a pound, all right, let's do that. How about the uh, the little tin? Uh, three three point one ounces, not a lot. All right, that's eight, that's just about a half a pound. That up. And then this one is at 12.8. So it's got a little more heft to it. I'm looking at all these newfangled pans on Amazon, which is probably the easiest place to search for camping products and get a decent price on it. And I had a whole list of them. Let me show you what they are. Here's the carbon steel versions and various different sizes and things that you can get. Uh, there's the prices. Uh, they're, they're really expensive. Um, and then there's the stainless steel. My wife, knowing that I was looking for an alternative to so much weight in my pack, you know, because she's the only one around I can really talk to about it, and she's going, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, 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 you're right, you know, yeah, uh -huh, right, yeah. So anyway, she's a good thrifter, you know? So she, she goes out and finds this aluminum pan. Now, I don't know how you feel about aluminum. I quit using aluminum a long time ago, um, 40 years ago, you know, because of all the hype about what aluminum could do and cause, you know, problems with uh, Alzheimer's and things like that. And the negative impact that aluminum in your food might have. That's when everybody started going to stainless steel. Now, I have a theory about aluminum. If I'm boiling water in a non-coated aluminum stock pot or something like that, I am concerned that it's going to leach into it. Because this is a long-term effect and it really could make a difference. But this is a frying pan that's going to have you know, butter and stuff in it. So I'm kind of okay with that. As long as it's seasoned, that's the word I'm looking for, 
coated, you know, so this will definitely get some seasoning. But let's see what it weighs. Do you root out? Seven point eight ounces. Remember, this one is one pound four tenths. See if it does the same. 7.8. Not quite a half a pound. So this is half the weight. This pan is half the weight of this pan. Now, this pan cooks really well. There's no doubt about it. And it's, you know, it's well seasoned, so I don't, I don't really have a stick problem. So I want to see if I can achieve that with this one. Now, what's neat about this pan is, let's see if I can turn it so you can see it, is what it says on it. Uh, is it there? Yeah. It's called Priscilla Ware. Hopefully you can see that. And it's it's the it's the group of Priscilla Ware called Speaks for Itself. Now if you Google that and try to look for stuff, you will find this out as vintage ware usually. And they're not overly expensive, 10, 15, 20 bucks for pots and pans. I've never seen this particular one though. I looked all over eBay and places. I see a lot of different sizes, but I don't see this one. And I think this is pretty much perfect for what I need to do. Now, what I did run into is the fact that there are cuts in the pan where somebody's used a knife in the bottom. And it's my theory that as long as this is butter smooth, you know, smooth as a baby's butt, you won't have a sticking problem. Same thing with your cast iron. It's porous at first. Once it gets seasoned, it fills in all those holes. And then it's really smooth and it doesn't stick. So I did do a little bit of a test run on this with a little bit of uh, steel wool to see what was going to happen. And I kind of liked what it was doing, so I wanted to put this on camera for you. So what I've decided to do is to just come in here and see how smooth I can get this with a piece of steel wool. Now, some people think that aluminum doesn't rust, but it does. It has aluminum oxide on it. And it's a little bit of a white coating. Here's a little piece of something right here on the side. I'm not sure if I can get that off or not. Looks kind of rough. I might need something stronger. Let me see. Let's see if the sanding pad will do it. Well, that makes a difference, doesn't it? You can see that make a difference. So 325. See this? 325 3M sponge pad sander. It's doing a pretty good job. Whatever that is right there. See that little dot? Let's see if I can scrape it off. Yeah, I know, it'll ruin my knife. I gotta sharpen it anyway. Look at that. Miracle of all miracles. And I think I'll go back to some steel wool. There's the bottom. I could care less what the bottom looks like, but I'm going to do a little bit of polishing on that as well. Now, am I going to use this in a fire? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not going to be particular about it. The only one that I'm so far I'm hanging on to is this, my little hot water pot for my coffee because it's so pretty, you know, oh, who wants to mess that up, right? Yeah, well, eventually, yes. Yes, it will happen. You just don't know when. Whenever my gas runs out, I guess. Let's see, final stage. If I let that go, yes sir, it's gonna take off. So, I'm not gonna put a polishing compound on this because I don't want that in my food at all. I'm just gonna hope this does some good. What do you think? It's looking pretty good. Let's do the bottom. Let's do a little more buffer. Hmm. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. It looks like a pretty good, uh, pretty good polish. Let's see if it works. In one of my previous videos on my antique gas stoves, I showed you 
this box and what was in it. And at the time, I told you I can't light it for you because every time I do, it catches on fire. And I've never used it very much because of that reason. I mean, when it was new, it would catch on fire. So it wasn't one of those things I could really return. So I just kind of held on to it all these years. The other day, I remembered all that and I started working on it. This is the burner. Here's the tank that goes around. Uh, this is the control valve, right, just like that. And if you unscrew all these items, there's a shaft obviously in there and it's got some rubber O-rings on it. They were leaking. And I have a huge assortment of O-rings I've had for 30 years and I've used almost none of them. You know, it's not something you use on a daily basis. But I went, oh wait a minute, I got that. So I go out, I put, match them up, I put one in, no, I put actually two in. Tighten her down, bingo. Had to replace the second one and the control knob was cracked so I had to epoxy that and put it back. Huh, okay. So you test it, test it out, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. All right, let's fill it up and give her a try. This is where you load the gas and a new can of butane goes right here and you do fill it in the upside down position I'm gonna have to hold it with one hand and press with the other it looks like the reason why it's inverted is you want the liquid to go into the tank and not just the gas if you turn it up you get gas if you turn it down like this you get liquid okay I don't hear anything else let's pull that off top pick on what do you think Ooh, look at the air. Look at the air. A thing of smoke. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. Let's see what happens. Turn that out. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on, let's get some more light out. There you go. How's that doing? Huh? That's a nice flame. And the control. Whoops. Cut it off. There you go. I mean, that's nice. I'm concerned about there being just, you know, the, the middle part of the pan getting heated. Okay, so let's, let's cook something. There we go. Finally. All right, so I got a pan of water. You should be able to actually see bubbles. And I see the boil happening right there, right on the bottom. You can see it. Still going. No flame out. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> I am convinced now that this is an extremely clean pan. So does food stick to it? Is it going to have a problem with taking a fire in the middle and spreading it out? I don't know. Why don't we cook something? I have an egg. Those stick pretty easy, don't they? I be willing to bet it's going to stick in this pan. Now, I like cooking with butter. So I'm going to use a decent hunk right there. See what happens. It will set that over there. Let's light her up. Did you see it? I'm gonna have to turn the turn this down some, I think. I'm turn this light out. Maybe you can you can see the flame. There we go. Seems a little high. Let's take it down. There we go. See what happens now. If your butter's not frying, neither will your egg. Well, you can see that just totally respond. Oh wow. Okay, that's got some aluminum in it. I can see that coming up. I would have thought with all the buffing and scrubbing, but you see it has a tint to it. Let me see, you can't see it. You see that? I can see the aluminum in that. So let's get that out of there and do it again. If you really want to clean something, go ahead and put your oil and stuff in it. It will definitely do what it's got to do. Oh yeah, you can see that really, really bad. An old shop towel. Ah, yeah, see that, uh, see that color? That's, <laughs> that's metal. 
Okay, don't want that in my egg. It defeats the whole purpose. That looks much butter. And I don't know how you like your eggs, but I like mine over easy. A little bit of salt. The butter's got salt in it, so that's all covered. See a little bit of sticking right in the middle there. I'm going to try to get some of that. There we go. So it has to have the, the slide test, right? By being a much thinner pan, I'm trying to use a much lower heat. See a little bit of sticking right in the middle. A little bit more. This is the easiest way to adjust your heat. Don't forget that. Just lift it straight up. There we go. See a little bit of sticking right in the middle where the heat was at. I think that's acceptable. Okay, because I was unattentive, I got this little bit of sticking right in here. See, the whole idea is for me to season this pan. That's what I'm, that's what I'm after, actually. And just get an idea for how it's going to cook. Let that actually burn. Now, what do you think? Huh? Just a... Oh, it's a little harder. See, I like mine over easy. That's a little... Has a, it's still... It's, yeah, it hard cook a little bit. It's pretty low. It's doing really well. Considering this is what it can do. Uh oh. I'm let it go out. There's some white and some burnt butter. Let that season in. Let's get a, let's get a bite. Mmm. So this is Mike B from Mike's Wild World. Showing you a few new pans, weighing out some things. And I hope you got something from that. And I it, please comment. Please let me know what you use. If it's titanium, if it's stainless steel, if it's copper. You know, if it's a... Uh, Dutch oven like cast iron or whatever you want to use uh, I'm gonna try this aluminum pan I was very grateful my wife found this and this is like a two to three dollar item as opposed to the pricey stuff that I was going to order off Amazon just because it was cool and I think this looks cool so anyway thank you wifey for helping me out and uh, this is Mike B from Mike's World I'll see you next time